What's good guys, it's Ida from Afro Kicks and today we're going to talk about planning your customs. So I posted a picture on Instagram of my plans for my customs and the way that they turned out after I had actually created the shoes. I was having conversations with people about whether they do plan their customs beforehand or whether they don't and if they do, what do they use to do that? Some people said they just sketch it on a piece of paper, other people said that they measured the exact shoe like the shoe size they're doing and then sketch that out on a piece of paper. Other people said they, they use Photoshop or they use other kind of apps or some people just don't do it at all, they just freehand and go straight ahead. Others say that they do do it in detail because they give it to their customers before they actually start the customs. Today I'm just going to talk to you about different ways of planning your customs beforehand if that's something that you want to do, from the Angulus mock-up sheets that they have to just how I do it and that is on Photoshop. For what I'm going to be talking to you about today, you do need Photoshop but I'm sure there's other ways that you could do it for free. Um, I'm sure there's different apps or different websites that you can go on. There's the Nike ID website you can use, like there's different ways to do it but this is just how I do it. So let's just get right into it. If you want to use the Angus Direct method, you want to head to their website and I have a link in the description box down below. Go to the Frequently Asked tab and at the bottom you will see Shoe Mockup. I click on that and it will load a whole load of different shoes to work on. Unfortunately, they haven't got some of the essentials like, you know, the Nike Air Force Ones, for example, or Adidas Superstars, but there are other ways to go around that. So for this one in particular, I think I'm going to pick these Jordan 5s right here. So just click on it and it downloads as a Photoshop file. Now click on your downloads tab and open up that file and Photoshop will open. As you can see on this side here, you have a whole load of different sections. So what they have done for you have literally split up each little segment of the shoe into its own layer, which I think is absolutely amazing and super helpful, especially when you just want to change the colorways, which I'll be doing for this example. So in order to do that, select a section that you want. So I'm going to go with the Hmm, let's go with the mesh, I haven't done that before. So you want to go over to your fill tool, so there you go with the bucket. Select a colour, so I'm going to go with black and just press that section there. And as you can see it fills it in really solid black. Obviously to make it seem a bit more realistic you want it to be a less of a solid colour and more opaque. So just bring down the opacity a bit, about 70, 72, that seems good enough for me, 74 it's on. So that section's done. Now I want to work on this section right here that I don't know the name of, so is it mid-piece? It's easier when you have the select tool on so you can know exactly what you're um, working with. So yeah, shortcuts if you're using a Mac, um, you want to press V for that, the selection tool and G for the fill tool. So with V, we know what we're working on, and that is the mid piece. And then G, that means that we can now fill it up with a color. I'm gonna go with a color that I tend to use a lot for other things, which is why it's there. Um, so I'm just gonna go with some reds, yellows, green, and black, basically. And obviously, this is just a quick example of what I might do. But we shall see how it turns out. And then obviously, because it's on Photoshop, you can just rearrange. Ooh kind of liking it see with some colors you don't have to really change the opacity but I'm gonna bring this opacity down to yeah to about 78 this is giving me all kinds of what are they, what are they called in America HBC you HBCU yeah it's giving me all kind of HBCU vibes right now we're gonna go for the lace holders and we're gonna make them gonna make them green I think. The lace holders we're gonna go with the green. I would expect this to fill in both of the lace holders but you just wanna do one. Cool! We'll do one lace holder then. Why is it only giving me one lace holder? Interesting. See that is an issue right there we want to be able to see all of the image how it would look as a whole not just bits and pieces of the angles. yeah you get the gist of it this is one way of doing a shoe mock-up using 
the different things that Angus provides. It's really good for changing colorways to see how it looks, but there is other ways to do it. And I'm gonna show you how I personally do it. I'm going to just close this. Don't need to save that because I'm not gonna use that again. And just make a new, um, just make a new default sized document. So you wanna go to Google and type in the shoe that you want. So I'm just gonna go with Air Force Ones, white ones, and then this image, I think I just used that one. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, right click it or press control click if you're using a Mac and save the image. So I'm just gonna save it to the desktop, just like that, and then go to Photoshop. And then open my finder, my desktop is here, and drag the image and press enter. So now I have an image of a shoe to work on. I'm just gonna press the V button and press shift, make it smaller. By pressing shift, you just keep the size intact. All the proportions are all good. Make it slightly smaller, press enter again. Okay, so now we're working with layers. For this kind of custom, you wanna make sure that you have layers. So I'm gonna make this top layer and I'm gonna make it my outline layer. So I'm going to my brush tool by pressing B. Don't ask me why I was using that massive tool before. I am not sure. So I'm just gonna go to what I usually use. Make the hardness 100%. Yeah, that's good for me. Make it slightly smaller. Cool. So in order for me to do this, I use my Wacom tablet, which I find amazing. It's so easy to just draw on top of things with on Photoshop, especially. It's a lot easier than using a mouse because I can imagine a mouse getting very irritating very quickly. Now I'm going to add another layer and just fill in the swoosh. So using my black, pen or brush sorry I'm going to do the swoosh again and there if you don't work on layers it will really mess you up later on down the line so say for example I was drawing something let me just make a completely new layer say I was drawing a person so let's just do a quick person with an afro and then I wanted to color in their hair so I went for like a brown color well that was pretty decent or brownish so then I went in and I started coloring and I realized oh crap ow oh I went out of the line so now I want to erase it so I press E and that's a giant eraser press E make the hardness up and then I want to erase but now I've erased the bloody outline as well so now I've got to go in and draw the outline and not only that my color has now covered the outline so I'll have to go over it again but if I had layers it would mean that I could put this brown underneath the outline so that the outline is still popping and if I have a mistake on the brown I can rub that out without affecting the layer on top so this is why we work with layers if I was doing um, a custom like the Kuji customs I've done I would create a new layer drag it underneath my all my layers really and using the black I would create the outlines so with the Kuji customs they tend to have a white section in the middle so that would be my white section and then you have whatever shape going on and then you add another white section then whatever colors you have going on then another white section now you want to add your color so I'm going to add another layer underneath that it might be a good idea to name your layers but I ain't got time for all of that so and go for a bluish color and start to color in okay so now we have our basis for what we're going to draw on now we're going to add patterns onto that so you want to make a layer in between the outline layer and the block color layer so now you have one in between that you can kind of just doodle on so using your eye drop tool select the color go back to your brush i'll, I'll zoom in I might make my brush a bit smaller and now just start adding the, the shapes I want to add so mm, what should I do here? Let me just do lines. I don't know. Line, line, dot, 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 line. <laughs> and then with this one again, I tool brush and then just might just add these. And then I would do the same all around so that I can get an idea of what colours work together, which colours don't. I might just draw like a shape here and then practice inside what color, what kind of shapes I like to go with it. Or like a 
if I wanted to do triangles, do I want it to do a, to have an outline inside, do I want to have it inside, do I want to just keep going, like what kind of what kind of shapes and colours am I going to use? Like most times I would have my own little key on the top, so I'll just pick the colours that I'd want, for example, just so that I know these colours work together well. Or if I'm basing it off of a um, particular theme, I'll make sure I have the colours there so I know what colours to work with, that kind of thing. So do you guys plan your custards before you start? And if you do, how detailed are they? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you.